as well. First, though, I want to turn to... Well, I don't know how much it gets covered, really. It used to get covered. I remember um, 2014, I got sent down to... Uh, when I was working for Nick Ferrari as, as a reporter, I got sent down to a place where fracking was taking um, place. And there was a protest there, big protest at the at the fact that this site was going to be used for fracking. And this protest was enormous and actually turned quite violent um, as a result of, uh, of of the fracking people coming in and trying to set up. People were chaining themselves to fences. People, and people were down there for weeks. Some, I think actually in, in some cases they were there for a month or so, protesting at the idea that fracking was going to take place at all. Time has moved on since then and there have been legal challenges that have been overturned by the government to allow fracking to happen. And and sites have now opened up at various places across the country, including in the lovely village of Little Plumpton in Lancashire, which I can already imagine. <laughs> in one's mind's eye, you are cast to Little Plumpton in Lancashire, uh, where they are fracking at the moment. Although not quite at the moment, because it's had to be halted for a third time, because there's been another tremor recorded on the site. A 1.1 magnitude tremor was the strongest uh, since work began at the site two weeks ago. There have been two other seismic movements of 0.8 uh, tremor, but it's not percent, is it? But on the it'd be Richter scale, wouldn't it? 0.8 on the Richter scale on Friday and Saturday. So Cordrilla, who are the firm behind the fracking, have said that they've had to halt fracking for 18 hours while they investigate what's been going on. Um, and I just wonder whether there, if you are, live in an area of the country where fracking is taking place, Somerset, I think the places in Sussex, certainly in the northeast and the northwest, there are a lot of places where fracking is now taking place. Do you see it as a as a sort of a necessary evil that you have to put up with because it's right that the that the country tries to diversify where it gets its energy from because if you look what's happened to um, energy prices in the United States when it comes to fracking there they've actually come down because of the United States being able to extract this um, this stuff from 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 shale, shale isn't it I think and l listen m my knowledge of what fracking actually is is very limited as you can already tell but it's going on, it's happening in the US, it's clearly going to happen more in this country. I wonder what you make of it happening, whether you completely oppose it, on what grounds, on grounds that it's dangerous, presumably, or whether you think, do you know what, we've got to find ways of providing our own energy, it's only going to get um, more uh, difficult for us to get our own energy as, as we look to, to have renewables and we look for other ways of, of getting energy that don't involve oil and coal. So we need to find ways of doing it. And if there are trillions of tonnes worth of gas in shale underneath the UK that we can use to power pretty much anything, then let's go get it. 0345 6060 973. You will jump to the front of what it, what is already an increasingly lengthening queue to get on air tonight if you are somebody that lives in one of these areas where fracking is taking place. If you are a resident in Little Plumpton, I would love to hear from you. Let's come to some experts first who can give us a picture of what fracking is like across the UK. Tom Burke is the chairman of E3G, third generation environmentalism and a former government advisor on the environment. And Ken Wilkinson is a retired oil services engineer. Um, Ken, to you first, tell us why the UK is fracking. What's it doing it for? Good evening. Well, we're massively uh, using gas. Uh, the predictions for gas, for the, I was looking through some of the climate change predictions for the future 30 or so years. We're going to be using gas in substantial amounts. And at the moment, we're importing about half of our gas. That's going to rise to about 80%. It's coming from places which have poor regulatory regimes. Um, Russia's small at the moment, but it's, going to, it's producing about 40% of the gas that's used in Europe. And basically, uh, we're going to be using the energy. Why don't we use the best? It's, it's, it's not the best uh, uh, lowest greenhouse gas, uh, shale gas. It's slightly higher than natural gas from a, a natural reservoir, but it's much better than LNG. But Importing so, so, the stuff from Qatar is yeah. uh, poor You say in terms of we, the we've got to do this. We, we need to rely on ourselves a bit more for lots of different reasons, environmental, yep. political. We need to get on with this. OK, yes. Ken, hang on the line. I want to bring in Tom Burke, chairman of E3G. Tom, do you think we need to get on with it and do it for economic and political and possibly financial reasons? I certainly don't. And, and just to, to make something clear, we're not actually fracking anywhere. There are lots of places where people are thinking about it, but the only place where we've actually done any fracking at all is Quadrilla, and that's the site you were talking right. about Thank that's you. been stopped because of the tremors. I absolutely again. agree, yep, yep. 
So, and, and do we need the gas? No, we don't need the gas. Um, <laughs> we've got we've got gas. Uh, of the world has got gas coming out of its ears. There's gas all over the place. There's lots of it around. So and why should it? we import it then? Why do we import everything? I mean, should we import every single bit of our food and sit on our backsides, or should we be actually? generating our own energy we mined our own coal in the past our own iron ore are we supposed to just be reliant on foreign countries the, it's let tom burke well come back to that ken hang on safe. ken you posted your question let tom burke come back to that <laughs> Well, the, the basic reason why we should import it, we should buy the gas wherever it's cheapest so that we keep bills down and keep our, our businesses competitive. Uh, and should, should, um, is there any uh, thinking that shale gas isn't going to be competitive? Yeah, absolutely right. There's no um, uh, support industry in this country for doing it. We've got much yes, more complex... Is. We've got a massive national grid. Oh, oh, I'm gas. sorry, we don't have any wildcat drillers. We don't have all the support and services that we yes, you need we do. to... Yes, we We've run oh. the North Sea... Hang on a sec, Ken. Ken let, uh, yeah, uh, I know you want to jump in, but let Tom, yep. let Tom make his point <laughs> first. Okay. We, we simply don't have the industrial infrastructure to support fracking, on top of which the geology of Britain is very different from the geology of the United States. There's lots of fracturing. We're very unsure about uh, whether it'll actually be possible uh, in a lot of places where theory says there's gas, but uh, nobody's yet proved it up. Okay, so, let me come back about the geology. In uh, the US, they only have very thin bands of shale. Now, in the UK, it's much, much thicker, um, several, you know, a thousand metres, which is there may be only a hundred metres uh, plays in uh, the US. Is it thick that in means Little on a single On a single well pad, yeah. You could plug down maybe 60 wells and be generating huge amounts of gas for a long period of time. Plant a load of trees around it, nobody notices it. Well, well hang on. You naturally drill about, uh, with tops around about two miles. So yep. you have to build a pad, you drill out, I think you drill lots of wells from one pad, but you drill them out about two miles. Then you have to go and build another pad. Chaps. Two miles, uh, f Chaps. four miles away. So you drill yeah. back Chaps. another yeah. two miles. Chaps. So you basically you you have to connect them all up, lads. Yes, and Team? Uh, you don't. We've got gas pipes connecting. Gentlemen, <laughs> virtually Gentlemen. every house in, in the UK. But, but, Listen up! Hey, no, whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm in charge of this. Yes, no, okay, Tom. Nom sorry. Nominally, <laughs> I'm in charge of this. Do, do, you, you've gone into great detail about the depth of shale and, yes. and the pads that can be used. For, for some of us who are first-time frackers, Tom, can you explain what, what you feel the actual damage to the environment around places like Little Plumpton might actually be? Well, you're going to build a whole series of pads. You've got to connect them up. You have to put in huge amounts of water. You've got to uh, truck in the sand, you've got to take away all the water that comes back up from the wells when you've drilled them, you've got to uh, uh, treat that uh, before you can dispose of it. It's, it you basically, you industrialise the country, which is why people in those areas where fracking is uh, proposed have got really furious about it. But do uh, you, could I come in here now, Tom? Of course, Ken. OK, I brought uh, complaints against various anti-frack groups and, and industrialisation of the countryside has never, ever been sustained by anybody. You're talking about a pad, which is a couple of acres, uh, five miles from the next pad. Uh, the amount of trucks is all has to be in the planning document. Uh, building the pad takes a while, which is why it's great to drill 60 wells from, wells from one pad. But do well, we really need it, to quote the philosopher Carl Pilkington? Oh, yeah. Kington? Well, look, why we, should we import stuff paying good money to basically, uh, you know, mostly it's going to Norway at the moment, but increasingly it's going to, you know, ISIS supporting Qatar with the poor greenhouse gas footprint, and increasingly it's coming from Russia. So does this have anything to do, Ken? Does this, does this have anything to do with Nord Stream 3? No, there is Nord, Nord Stream, Stream 2, 2, I think. Yeah. It's Nord got Stream. nothing to do with that, no. the gas that Germany's getting from Russia. No. Well, that, some of it is coming through that. That's a new uh, gas pipeline, which means that we are basically, um, you know, at ransom to the Russians if they suddenly decide to switch the taps off. They can. <laughs> Is, so that, is that fair, Tom? Is that not a fair point? I'm sorry. No, it's just scaremongering. Uh, the idea that we're at ransom to the Russians, uh, that's 
uh, we have, I forgot the number, I think at one time you can count up to about 50 different places where we can get gas. But what we should really be doing is driving bills down for our customers and our businesses by investing in energy efficiency. That's why gas demand has not been going up in Europe for the last uh, a decade or so. I you know, totally agree with you. We've, we've got an expanding need for gas is, is, is sort of really rather out-of-date idea. But the problem is, if we're going to um, get to a lower carbon economy, I've spent about an hour reading through the Climate Change Committee 2018 report to Parliament this morning because I'm preparing something. And um, basically, the reason that we've decarbonized our economy uh, is because of gas and renewables. It's a very powerful combination. The main thing in terms of climate change, which everyone's worried about yep. at the moment, is to get rid of coal. Well, it, and do we not help ourselves get rid of coal, Tom, by by trying fracking, by trying to extract no, we're this gas? We're going to get rid of coal in the next three years without, right. use, without using any more gas anyway. Uh, and um, you, you you don't need uh, gas for uh, power. That's renewables are going to provide us with the electricity we need, which you do need some gas for going forward, but nothing like as much as uh, some people think is uh, as for heat. People aren't going to change heating their houses uh, uh, very quickly, and so we're going to need some gas. But we've got we've got lots and lots of sources mm. for gas, including we're still going to be producing gas on the North Sea for some time. So the we idea are, but that it, we need it's to do going to be about eight. 80% imports. Um, That's the big problem. That's well, what's that, projected that's in about 20 years. Gents. But, but Bain Labs. has got all its forecasts about energy oh, demand in this country again. wrong consistently over the last uh, decade. It just, it just overestimates Gentlemen. enormously Gentlemen. what's going to happen. Gentlemen. Yep. Yeah. Very, very grateful to you for coming on. I'm afraid we've completely run out of time. But I'm d grateful to you for explaining the pros and cons of fracking and to, to do it in a way where clearly it ignites passion on both sides. Tom Burke, you're chairman of E3G, third generation environmentalism. And thank you to you too, Ken. Ken Wilkinson, you're a retired oil services engineer. I'm going to dip my toe in this water. I'm not sure how many people are going to be as upset or pro-fracking as our two guests, because I'm not sure whether it's an issue that has really um, ignited much public feeling. Prove me wrong. 0345 973 Fracking has been suspended again at Little Plumpton in Lancashire as a result of a third tremor that's taking place there. Do you think that we need to do this in order to try and see how much gas is stored in shale rock under the UK in order to be able to provide ourselves with an energy source into the future or there are too, it's too dangerous it's, it's so unnecessary we don't need to do this uh, and, and you are opposed to it, fundamentally opposed to it. 0345 6060 973 to frack or not to frack your call's next. 1116 I knew you wouldn't let me down. Loads of you wanting to get in touch to have your say about fracking around the country uh, in places that uh, are perhaps not necessarily touched on all that much by the national media that don't really get a look in all that much, but you are very, very concerned, some of you, about what you see going on. Let's come to some of your calls then, to Blackpool first, and to Tina. Hi, Tina. Hi there. What do you make of... Um, of uh, have you got fracking around where you live? I, I'm literally about ten minutes away from it now. Ah, yeah. So, and, this is a, this um, and we've, is a we've been fighting this every day for seven years. This is a proposed you know, site, right? Yeah. Well, it's actually in existence now. It was the the site on the A583 Little Plumpton. Oh. Is yeah. So um, it's just um, it's between Kirkham and Blackpool, and it's yeah. It's, as I say, it's just up the road, and it's a site that's now developed, and they've just done the first. So you're near where this tremor happened. I, I'm here. I'm right over where the tremor happened. Yeah. Oh, where I'm staying is, yeah. So and you, we've been here every day. <laughs> we've been here protesting every day for about 656 days now since they started building it. And now that they've actually reached this stage, it's just quite daunting. It's it's quite overwhelming, really. You know, we, we watched the site get built. It was really difficult to go through that. But it's taken them 22 months on a job that should have taken them five months. So as a protest, I think we were very effective in slowing them down. Um, but now it's finally reached that stage. And... and, and uh, we now have residents like who are panicking and, and sending messages and saying, you know, I'm really concerned tonight. I'm concerned as I go to sleep. I'm worried about what will happen. You know, this has been 15, you know, on the 15th of October, they started fracking. And on the 18th, they started the earth tremors. And we've had 28 to now. So I know three only registered at 0 0.8, 0 0.8 and 1.1, which is high. 
um, for, for this type of work. Mm -hmm. But we have had 28 seismic events listed by the um, BGS. The British Geological Survey. Yes, so it's listed as Blackpool earthquakes, and you can see it on there, and there are 28 of them. So today You we don't actually five. feel them, though, do you? I mean, No, but that's they're not They're so the insignificant issue. that you don't feel them. But it depends on whether you measure an earthquake by the fact of how it feels on your body being the most important thing. The most important thing when you're drilling a frac site is that the well integrity holds. Now, if you can imagine, yes, that deep down, it's not going to impact anything that's infrastructure near the surface. But there is one really important piece of infrastructure, there, and that's the well itself, the borehole. Do you, do you, do you not think, through. though, Tina, that if we are trying to move away from coal and oil to, a, to having energy that we can provide for ourselves, that it's right to see how much is, is under the ground in this country in order to... Be, I mean, think of the jobs that could be created, the money that could be made. Okay, first, the jobs you get as a double will remember it quickly. Uh, in Victoria, really, there was a ban after a five prosperity study. Oh, Tina, we are. That Tina, we're losing the line to you, I'm afraid. I do want to try and get you back up because you are the person nearest Little Plumpton <laughs> that we have spoken to so far. Maybe there's someone actually in Little Plumpton that we can get hold of. Um, Tina, we'll try and come back to you. Thank you. Let me just bring you this tweet from Michael, who says, I live in North Yorkshire near to a proposed site for fracking. The lack of job opportunities mean it would be a bonus for the local economy, no matter what the NIMBYs would have you believe. Paul is a new caller in Horse Hill. Hi, Paul. Yeah, Hi. Tell us about Horse Hill. Is that the proposed uh, another? Horse Hill is near Gatwick. We have a company here that's been trying to. Well, they're calling it acidification. Uh, they use slightly less pressure to create the fracking. They use higher levels of chemicals. The the government changed the definition of what is and isn't fracking. What they're doing here is considered fracking in most other countries. Right. And why does that worry you? Uh, well, several reasons. I mean, apart from the, the water pollution, the flaring, which is obviously burning off the excess gas, uh, the the extra problems on the roads. It's also, we've, we've just heard that we, you know, according to this new study, we've got 12 years to limit climate change to yep. devastating one and a yep. half degrees. But doesn't this help? I mean, doesn't this move well, us no, away not from, not, from coal not, and, not, and oil? Not at all. You, you don't solve a problem of creating fossil fuels or burning fossil fuels by digging for more fossil fuels. You solve the problem by going down completely different routes. But it's a stepping stone, every... isn't it? That's what people argue, that fracking could be... Getting we out of shale gas could be the stepping stone. Got, we don't have time for a stepping stone. Quite simply, this is, this is a Ponzi scheme. None of the big companies like BP and Geco Prackler and ExxonMobil, they're not fracking these sites because it's not profitable for them. Look, well, let me these put this... companies... Let me put Sorry, this to you. Okay, yeah. Let me put this to you. There, there is an estimated 1.3 trillion cubic feet of shale gas sitting beneath our feet in this country. And there was a report done by the Institute of Directors that said the introduction of fracking could create 74,000 jobs and create £3.7 billion a year. Right. Firstly, they don't create very many jobs, a handful of security. If you're talking about those number of jobs, then you are talking about the industrialisation of all the countryside. You're, no, you're talking Why about... are we talking about the industrialisation? No one is saying let's frack everywhere. People are well, saying let's they, frack... If you in... look at the licences... Are... In the same way that people they, are saying are. let's not build everywhere... Steve, Steve Sanderson, who is one of the, 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 the guys here, he's been quoted on the BBC as saying we will need, for this process to be economically viable, viable we will need back-to-back -back wells. If you look at aerial photos where this technology is being used in the States, where it's being used in Australia, with quite devastating effects, they are putting these wells every two to three miles apart. So why so do you think it's happening? If, 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 money, in, if in your mind this is such a terrible thing yeah. to be doing, that is so disastrous for the countryside, disastrous for, for our energy supplies and for the environment, why is it happening? Uh, well, at the moment, it seems to be uh, led by shareholders and the government somebody's making a lot of money out of this most of them none of these companies at the moment are producing any oil but they're valued in that the hundreds of millions of pounds why because it's a ponzi scheme they're getting new investors in this these, these companies fold within a few years in america there isn't a single fracking company that's running at a profit really some of these companies are overestimating their reserves by up to 93 percent to get investors on board they're, they're, why, why, don't, why aren't we concentrating on... Why doesn't every school, hospital, public building... Why aren't they covering solar panels by now? 
Why isn't every out-of-town shopping centre covered in solar panels and have wind turbines? Does it work? Does it really work? Well, you you build a shopping centre and you're expecting tens of thousands of people to drive there. Would you you get everybody to put solar panels on their house, on the roof of their house, as a way to? Do we have time not to? Interesting question that we'll leave hanging, Paul. Thank you. Would you do that? Would you stick a solar panel on the roof of your house? Or, or, or if you were forced to stick a solar panel on the roof of your house because you're worried about climate change? We did have that report the other week that said we've got basically 12 years to sort this all out. Paul, thank you. 0345 6060 uh, obviously, there are a lot of people ringing who are very, very anti this, and and Paul has uh, given us some reasons as to why. I do wonder whether there are people who are, are either sort of, sort of nothing this. They kind of think, well, let's give it a go. If there's if there's money to be made and energy to be found, let's let's do it. Or whether there are people who think, um, like our guest earlier, actually this is part of the way forward if we're trying to get rid of our supply of our reliance of a supply of oil um, and coal and and on our reliance upon other countries to provide us with the energy that we need let's go ahead with it 0345 6060973 i don't know what's happened in little plumpton maybe we've woken them all up but i've got a text here on 84850 emma says i'm a resident of little plumpton I live about 400 metres away from the fracking site. The previous caller, who was very pro-fracking, clearly doesn't live in a fracking area, and I doubt his opinions would be the same if he did. Concerns about environmental damage and water pollution to the surrounding areas are very worrying to local residents, and I guess only time will tell. The lack of national news coverage is perhaps very telling. Emma, welcome to the programme. Helen, welcome to you. You're in Halifax. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for having me on the show. Tell us what you want to say. Um, I've been very concerned about some of the dialogue that has been on your show because you quite rightly pointed out that an international panel of climate scientists have said that we have 12 years to have a catastrophic climate breakdown, the likes of which we can't yet imagine. And we're actually sat here discussing whether or not we should be importing gas when we're actually busy exporting gas and... We also have gas offshore. It's very dubious why we're even fracking anyway. But that wasn't what I wanted to um, come on your show about. I wanted to talk about the complete failure and the breakdown of the regulatory system which props up this industry um, purely because people actually believe that it is in place. And as a result of years of investigation um, and more recently actually researching and um, bringing with another campaign of a legal challenge which actually shut Quadrilla's down from fracking by the process of a, something called an emergency injunction. Right. We actually stopped Crowdriller um, operating at the fracking site because um, the High Court actually thought that there was um, insufficient emergency evacuation plans and contingency plans in place for the local public should there be a major incident on the Preston New Road well site and that that was something that should be examined in okay. more detail. So, so let's say, Helen, I, I appreciate the, the points that you're making about the c- concerns about safeguarding and all the rest of it. Let's say that those yes. concerns are allayed and that that process is in place and that it's all done by, by the book and everyone's relatively as happy as they can be. What do you say to the charge of you're just being a bit of a NIMBY um, and we need to do this because we need to have a, 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 a good energy supply. Maybe this is the stepping stone to far more, uh, u- far greater use of renewable energy. Let's just get on and do it. Um, I don't think that NIMBYism applies when we all live on a planet that will become very, very damaged as a result of the continual plundering of our resources of fossil fuels. I'm not a NIMBY. And if I actually um, was coming on your show to talk about um, the proliferation of the fossil fuel industry, that would be another matter. But I did come on your show to speak about the immediate impact, which you may call NIMBYism, to the local community, which is something that happens um, in the United States and other countries where fracking has happened, where, where towns are evacuated for around a mile or more really? for, maybe, for maybe hours or days as a result of this industry. This isn't something that we should be allowing to happen. This isn't something that can be hand-waved away as a minor safety concern. You know, these are major incidents. These are major um, things that can go wrong. And I do believe there were a number of residents at Grenfell Tower that tried to tell the authorities that there was something they should be paying attention to. And I think that as we sit on the precipice of a... And it is the major industrialisation of the countryside, by the way. It would take tens of thousands of wells to make this industry anywhere near viable. 
anywhere near viable. It would open us up to huge swathes of um, of development, which is exactly why the government has actually tried to fast track planning applications via the means of permitted development. But you think, Helen, that the warnings that were given by the Grenfell residents it is akin to the warnings that you are giving about the effects of fracking. Absolutely. There is a real chance, as there has been shown many times in the United States, of well explosions and blowouts that have required the evacuation of the local population. Helen, we've got to leave it there for time reasons. I really appreciate you calling on this. We've got so many people wanting to ring in, lots of new callers from around the country as well, from places that really don't get a look in when it comes to the national media. Helen, thank you. 0345 973. The prize now goes not to the residents of Little Plumpton, I think we got there, but to anyone who's listening perhaps in the United States, in areas where this is taking place, on that point about safety. Is it true that these areas are being evacuated, that whole towns are having to run, flee, because of the ill effects of, of fracking? 0345 6060 973. Now, that really would be quite something if we managed to get to somewhere like North Dakota. Is that your real name, Gazer? Good evening. Uh, I changed it by day, depot when Quadrilla uh, fracked my home in Lytham that I've now lost through fighting fracking uh, on April 1st, 2011. So, yes, it's uh, my real name by depot. You changed your name to Gazer Frackman. I did. My name's Gazer Tarion. It's Hungarian born in Bolton. I now uh, I've been fighting fracking uh, and I do it full time now to successfully so far. Uh, we're just waiting for an appeal now at the Supreme Court uh, again to take on Quadrilla. And what happened to your house? Uh, it was damaged on April the 1st, 2011, in the early hours of the morning. I had cracks uh, in the walls and the inside walls. We had to repoint the outside. And we didn't know at the time that it was uh, fracking. We didn't find out until months later because uh, Quadrilla, as usually, uh, denied any knowledge. Uh, found out months later what uh, fracking was and I've been fighting it ever since. And why did you change the name? Uh, it was literally, uh, it, it was, for, in a way, publicity, but it was, it was mainly because uh, they couldn't spell my name, nobody could pronounce <laughs> Terry on it, so I just changed it to Frackman to simplify. And it's really paid off. It has paid off. Because it's uh, brought attention to what you're trying to do, which is to, to stop wholesale fracking in this country, right? Well, it's not trying to do. We've successfully done that with the evidence. Uh, we were part of the group uh, that uh, that met in Lytham, where you know my house was, uh, and we stopped uh, Quadrilla. We've closed four sites that they had drilling sites on. We've been successful. Those were rubber stamped by Stuart Perigo, of, uh, the planning officer at Lancashire County Council, uh, before we even knew about fracking. Uh, Anna's Road, pre uh, Soul Farm, Grange Road, and now Beckinsall are all closed. They're all now back to fields. That's down to the community with the evidence. We haven't got the money. We haven't got the back in the government. We have done that by sheer hard work and determination because it's wrong. And the fear is, well, when you say it's wrong, it's wrong because it, it damages people like your good self. It damages your houses. It goes far beyond that. It turns fresh drinking water into toxic waste that they've got to dispose of. It, it breaks every climate uh, thing that we signed up to. Uh, the contamination, the, the amount of trucks on the roads... Uh, the way the police behave towards the public. Uh, you know, we've even been classed as terrorists. Uh, this has gone into two skills documentation. This is how desperate this government has. Every minister, uh, with, you know, many ministers have, have, uh, mm -hmm. have p passed on this poison chalice because it's, it's going to cost the Conservatives the next government. And when you get what, the fracking? boss of Quadrilla, yes, when you get the boss of Quadrilla, uh, Lord Brown, sitting on the table of David Cameron, then that corruption goes right into the heart of your government. And that's this, the amount of corruption that we've been fighting in Lancashire successfully. It was Sajid Javid who overruled that democratic decision mm -hmm. to put that side in that field, and now we are paying the consequences of it. It was also Claire Perry that allowed Quadrilla to uh, go ahead to advance with fracking, bypassing democracy. This government isn't interested in democracy. They are just pandering to the fossil fuel industry on a huge scale. And we don't even need it. There's enough gas mm. in the North Sea. We do not need this. They'll say it's a bridging fuel. It is not a bridging fuel. The bridging fuel is in the North Sea. We phased that out uh, to, to the point where we go back on, where, you know, where we're going to renewables. It's this government that are absolutely decimating the renewable industry. Gazer, great to talk to you. Fascinating story. Gazer Frackman, whose house was damaged 
uh, as you heard, by fracking that took place, the fight that he has taken and others have taken to these uh, companies, Cordrilla in this case, um, to get them to stop doing it because they say it would create so much damage. Look, we've heard a lot of people who are very, living in areas where fracking is taking place very, very angry about it. Do you, do you think that fracking is justifiable, that it is justified in some sense to try and make the most of the energy that is apparently waiting to burst forth from the ground beneath our feet and potentially create thousands of jobs and make everybody a lot of money. Well, hopefully everybody. Some people will make more than others, of course. That's the way it works. 0345 6060 973. More of your calls after this. It's great that we're getting around the country tonight. So many calls from, from all over the place. Daniel's in Preston. Hi, Daniel. Hello, Tom. Hello, mate. Are you someone that also believes this stuff should just not happen at all because of the dangers of it? No, not at all. I feel it's uh, very beneficial to the whole country. Around 40% of the gas in the UK, in the UK or 40% of the energy in the UK still comes from gas-fired power stations. And as nice as it would be to have everything powered by renewable, it can't happen overnight. Yeah. So we're still going to be relying on gas for at least the next 25 years to power these stations before they get converted to nuclear or go to renewable. So we're going to have to have time. something else, and we can't use... We might run out of oil or coal or whatever it might be, or that's becoming very difficult to use because of the climate change. Eventually, yeah, but to power these stations for the next 25 years, we will need gas. And it's much it's much more environmentally friendly to be digging up below your own feet to feed your power stations than to be drilling up a guitar, pump it, compressing it into a liquid, put, put it onto a ship, and then shipping it over to the UK. Mm. What do you say to those people who you've heard tonight who say, well, it damaged my house, it's a corporate greed thing, it is a corruption issue, there aren't enough safety practices put into place that mean that we can take them to court? What do you, what do you say to them? The safety levels for this site are ridiculous. If any other industry were kept up to 0.5 of a Richter scale, it, it wouldn't allow anything to happen. HS2 couldn't be built, Crossrail couldn't be built under those conditions. Most lorries would be taken off the road. What, because they create 0.5 on the Richter scale of a, of yeah, a trim? Yeah, they can create, create over 0.5 on the Richter scale of the uh, equipment to put close to the road. That's why the recording equipment has to be put over 100 metres from a road. How do you know all this, Daniel? You seem well genned up on this one. Uh, I study engineering at university and we look at this. <laughs> right. So, and, and, and to your mind, having looked at all of this, you're, you're coming down on the side of this is not just um, doable, but also actually necessary. Yeah, I feel it's necessary completely necessary and I don't feel it's very dangerous either. I feel a lot of the stories are scaremongering stories. You talk about earthquakes and earth tremors at the moment. These are things so little they can't be felt. They can only be recorded by equipment and they're similar to stuff like um, like a bus passing on the road is similar to a one Richter scale. But the, you do see, I mean I've seen videos on YouTube of in the States people turning on their taps and being able to basically set fire to it. With very unscrupulous um, contractors, that is very possible. With it not cemented correctly, but that wouldn't happen under the stringent um, way that you have to do it in the UK. Also, it would never affect anyone in Blackpool as their water comes from Wales and the Lake District. Does it? Yeah. It does not come from their local area. It comes from, it's brought in from Wales and from the Lake District. See, I never knew Lake that. Lake Windermere supplies about half of Manchester along with parts of Blackpool and Liverpool. So I never knew that either. That's, I, that's why I, I quite like doing these kinds of hours, because I, I have no b background knowledge to this stuff, really. And then you get someone like your good self ringing up who's studying it all, saying, actually, do you know what? This is, this is not just fine, but also needed. Daniel, thank you. Uh, let's go to Helen, another new caller, who's also in Preston. Hi, Helen. Hi. Hi there. Hi, Tom. Centre of the fracking world is Preston, and also the footballing <laughs> world, in my opinion. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, basically, I think it'd be a very disappointing budget for the environment. Um we have a little offshore gas for a, a number of years yet. And it was actually Blair's government that turned down the flow for gas. Um, we don't really need the chill gas. There's plenty out there in the North Sea. Um, one thing that really, really does concern me at the moment is the government has proposed a relaxation in the planning laws, which apply to fracking. Um, under the plan, the, the preliminary, preliminary drilling could be classed as permitted development, which is the same law that allowed people to build um, a small conservatory. This right. is what really, really concerns me, that this gets through. So you, um, you get people building dwellings on sites where they're fracking? Yeah, I mean, who, I mean you could have, um, get a place for planning permission and have an oil rig in your back garden. 
it's committee planning. Um, I really don't think it's something that needs to be taken to the local council to be decided on the local people, not the government. And you're, um, you're, so you're worried about the extra building that takes place that might take place on these sites, and that is what other people have said is the industrialisation of the countryside. You feel that that, that is yeah, absolutely. You feel that's real. Don't agree with it. Um, and um, we don't have an, um, an adequate evacuation process on the Preston site, which is only down the road from where I live in Ashton. Right. 4,332 4, people live, live within one kilometre of the site, and then there's 196,000 live five kilometres away. We really, really do need a true, a true risk assessment of this site. And your fellow Prestonian Daniel, who says this is absolutely fine, don't worry about it, you say... Well, we you're... are worried about it. You know, the schools nearby... Mm. Isn't it um, an adequate um, evacu- uh, evacuation um, um, process? Um, and it, you know, it, it, it's it's a right thing to have a few earthquakes every now and again. You know, it, it's rising as we it's only risen, risen to one point one. What's it going to be next week? So, are Quadrilla mm. not getting the message? Um, you know, if it's not time to stay stop, you know, enough's enough. I think we've had a few warnings now and I think we should be listening to it. Well, that that reflects what some of our callers were saying earlier, that they keep warning these companies and, and the government about the effects of it and don't seem to be listened to and it will take something very, very bad happening for them to heed them. Helen, thank you for the call. Gary is in Muswell Hill on 84850. Tom, just because other countries have banned or restricted fracking, it doesn't mean it's not safe. It could be just because of a political decision made by governments dominated by the Greens or the Liberals who generally oppose the continued use of fossil-based fuels. Uh, Francis is a new caller in Bournemouth. Hi, Francis. Hello, how are you doing? I'm well. I'm sorry to squeeze you in, but we've only got about a minute or so. All right. Tell me what you want to say. Well, I wanted to tell you that the um, the whole fracking process was actually invented back in 1963 for the purpose of um, disposing of liquid radioactive waste um, by burying them underground. Right. Well, if it's now done to get gas out to provide us with energy, that's not bad, is it? I think the whole thing is a ruse, to be perfectly frank with you, because um, the British geology is so fractured that unlike the Marcellus Shale in America, we haven't got a long continuous seam to be um, extracting the gas from. We'll have to leave the talk of what our shale shelves are doing to another time, Francis. We've run out of time. Thank you for your call on that. We'll move on. A fascinating hour, though. Thank you. We'll move on to talk about, well...